Helen, please um, frame yourself within the debate and the discussion we're going to be having today. Okay, thanks, Kate. Um, the first thing I wanted to talk about was um, I was a commissioner for the Speakers Commission for Digital Democracy in the House of Commons, um, and uh, we came up with five main recommendations in our final report, which is called Open Up, which I recommend everybody to have a read. And those five recommendations was that everyone should understand what Parliament does, but actually that's an onus on Parliament to make sure that they inform and educate. The second one was that Parliament should be fully interactive and digital. The third one was about engaging more people and that was uh, through something we called a cyber chamber and I'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. Fourth was online voting which is what all the press um, picked up on, the only thing they really seem to be interested in and the fifth one was open data. Um, it's just over a year now since we launched that report and um, I would say we're doing okay. Um, that uh, big change happens with a million small steps, you know, small things like you can now take your smartphone into the gallery in the House of Commons so you're actually allowed to tweet but you're not allowed to take any photographs, so, you know, step by step. Um, the cyber chambers, there's been 10 what are called digital debates, which is a ongoing Twitter conversation before and during debates in Westminster Hall and the most popular one was on STEM education, science technology um, education and more than a thousand people took part in that on Twitter and the cyber chambers have trended twice on Twitter. Um, E-petitions I think we should go and talk, talk a bit more about later. When I'm thinking about digital democracy um, I'm actually quite an optimistic person normally, but I do feel quite pessimistic sometimes about how much we've achieved, or should I say how little we've achieved. I think my first big worry is that I'm passionate about engaging people who are disengaged, digitally disengaged or politically disengaged, and so much of what I see happening, I think, in the digital democracy arena is for an audience who is already both digitally and politically engaged. So what we're doing is we're making uh, services, conversations, interaction, interactions better. There's more of it. It's easier. It's more convenient and flexible. But actually, are we really bringing new people into the debate? The second one is about power. Um, if we talk about making a change around digital democracy and things like increasing participation and opening up information exchange, really the people with the power need to understand that they need to do that too. Um, and that actually a lot of what's happening with digital is bolt on, it's like a few MPs have a bit more training on how to use Twitter better. That's not a massive change for democracy. You know, having said all of that, I'm an optimistic person and I'm always, you know, glass more than half full and, and actually it's really important when we talk about digital democracy to realise that this is all about people. So digital can help culture change and it's culture change that we need. So actually if more is put out in the open, if more is done out in the open, then actually by the very nature of sharing digitally, then actually I think that is going to change culture. I also think if um, politicians and people who, who want to be part of this debate are doing more collaboratively and digital provides the tools to enable people to do more collaboratively, then that also helps. And I think ultimately, if actually um, the people, uh, our elected politicians and other people in, in positions of power can actually see that digital provides an opportunity for co-ownership, for co-creation and dare I even say co-funding in situations like we're in at the moment um, with our current budget, um, then actually digital has masses to offer. So I think that we've made several tiny steps but for me I think the debate needs to be much bigger and I think we need to not think that this is all rosy and shiny and I think it has to be a combination of digital and face-to-face -face. and we need to make sure that we're including the disengaged in the conversation as well. 